Welcome back guys, are you prepared for the epic Northern Travelers build with only epic items that uses the same ability? That is probably the last build you will ever make and I'm having so much fun with it, it's absolutely incredible. This build has 100% crit chance, 600% critical damage, 100% melee resistance so in case you get hit and run out of the RS madness you don't get immediately killed you can just make your two kills and then activate it again blast off every enemy you can overrun mercenaries on nightmare even on daytime in a frontal attack you have only two kills to refill your RS madness this ability is actually bugged it is not 15% reduction it is the same 50% cooldown reduction so two kills will give you immediately a completely refilled RS Madness and you can use it so often. I could do conquest battles all day with this build. It is just so incredible using Ring of Chaos RS Madness the whole time, basically staying into RS Madness for the whole time of the conquest. That is insane. It's like playing around with toy soldiers. It has never been so much fun to make conquest battles, I tell you. Since many people also don't like axes, I also decided we put a better weapon here in this build and I will use swords for this RS God mode build. Of course you can also use any other weapon. I made this build so that you can use any weapon type you prefer. However if you have trouble understanding everything here then check out the YouTube membership or the Patreon membership perks to get some incredible 4k wallpapers, personal build advice, private chat rooms on our discord server so make sure to check it out. Before we go into the details of this build, we will of course check out the damage value for each of the attacks. Please be aware that when we attack overnight and from behind, that is impacting our attack strength. When we attack with the light attack overnight, we get 667,000. With the heavy attack, we get around 1 million damage. And with the charged heavy attack, we get around 3.2 million damage. The ring of chaos will be up to 1.8 million damage. And when we use the overpower in an animation cancel, which always occurs when enemies are sleeping, lying on the ground or when you hit them on staircases, then you can hit up to 10 million damage with the overpower attack. But what matters most in this build is the RS Madness ability, which has around 10 to 11 million damage with the activation damage and between 1.6 and 2 million damage with the normal attacks. Given the fact we have so much resistances in this build, even the hunter attacks are not bad. We have up to 3.6 million damage with the devastating shot, over 2 million damage with the ghost arrows and even the multi shot is not bad with around 1.5 million damage. These were even without using 6 cents so they can be double when you use 6 cents with it. But the best shot of course in this build is still the predator shot with over 5 million damage. So if it ever happens that you want to kill the mercenaries not with RS madness and with a hunter ability then you should rather use the predator shot instead. And of course overrunning mercenaries is no problem and I made it so strong that you can even overrun most of the resistance mercs even in a frontal attack at daytime. In the inventory we see we have 88,000 warrior damage and around 600,000 assassin damage. That is because we mostly focus here on assassin damage because assassin damage is used when we use the RS Madness ability. So instead of having to convert the warrior damage which we use when we use a normal northern traveler set, we can use assassin damage here directly to get more assassin damage than when we use the northern traveler. And we also have a much better influence on which engravings, which items to use so we can use melee resistance and much more crit damage and don't have the wasted engravings with the adrenaline and elemental resistance for example. The engraving ranking for the warrior damage would be first damage to swords, then critical damage at full health and then the other engravings here in the order as shown. For the assassin damage on the other side it is most important to have a high critical damage, so critical damage while full health, the normal 50% critical damage and also assassin damage here then to increase the base damage. Assassin damage basically consists only of assassin damage and critical damage so you have to focus on these two factors alone to get a high assassin damage. If you are more interested in how the damage is calculated for this specific build then check out the complete calculations in the description of this video. I've actually prepared two different versions for you. The first version has 600% critical damage but only 95% crit chance and the other version has 575% crit damage and 100% crit chance. Both of these versions have the same, the exact same warrior damage and assassin damage so the difference is only the slightly lower crit chance and the slightly lower critical damage. The version of the higher critical damage is better for assassinating mercs with normal assassination. So you should rather use that, but it also requires you to have the Oxesa's Helm of Darkness. So if you don't have that, then you have to use the other version. 
In the first version we used a perfect warrior sword with warrior damage, critical damage and damage swords. Then we engraved 100% damage but health kept to 25%. That is actually okay because we are 100% immune to all melee attacks, which means we are immune to 90% of all attacks in the game. And also additionally when we use Aura's Madness we cannot be killed anyway, so even when we got hit we are most likely using Aura's Madness in a fight and then we cannot be killed anyway. So there are two levels of immunity here which prevents you from dying. First off the 100% melee resistance and second the Aura's Madness ability which prevents you from dying entirely as long as it is running. But since Aura's Madness does not prevent you from taking damage, it only prevents you from dying, it is really vital to have 100% melee resistance in an Aura's Madness build. Because then you will stay at full health and dealing all the ton of critical damage at full health. With 100% melee resistance together with Aura's Madness you will become a complete terminator killing machine running around in Greece. On the second weapon we use the Spartan Javelin for assassin damage, damage spares and melee resistance. So mainly we want to have some melee resistance here because it is very difficult to get the high crit chance, crit damage and the Northern Traveler's perk all together on the arm. So we have to sacrifice something here to get the high crit chance and crit damage at the same time and therefore we have to use the Spartan Javelin. If we didn't go for the 600,000 assassin damage to be able to overrun mercenaries of course then we couldn't change the whole build then we can get much more warrior damage but I wanted to make it really able to overrun mercenaries with a normal assassination and then we had very limited options here to get 100% crit chance and a high critical damage at the same time. Of course if you don't want to overrun mercenaries with a normal assassination then you can make a much easier build with more warrior damage here of course. On the Spartan Javelin I used convert 50% warrior damage to all damage because we have multiple items of warrior damage. First of all the sword, then the Oxesius helm and we also use warrior damage here on the torso as well. So that was the best way to do it. On the Bighorn bow then we use critical chance because we need 100% or at least 95% critical chance here in that build and therefore we have to sacrifice our armor penetration engraving again. That's actually a reasonable loss here because armor penetration will not increase any of our assassin damage and it will also not increase our Aris Madness ability. Because Aris Madness uses the assassin damage and any ability that uses assassin damage like hero strike, Aris Madness, normal assassinations, rush assassinations, they will not be affected by armor penetration. So armor penetration would only increase the warrior damage and even more so for the hunter damage. But since this is a really Aura's Madness focused build, we just simply don't use armor penetration here to get more crit chance and get more of the other engravings instead. And don't forget that the Bighorn Bow increases your warrior damage. So without the Bighorn Bow you will be only at 44,000 warrior damage. So really use the Bighorn Bow in that build then you have at least 88,000 warrior damage. If not then it would be extremely low. For the helmet we use the Oxesas Helm of Darkness, a unique epic helmet with melee resistance, the only helmet in the game with melee resistance. So it has warrior damage, melee resistance, damage of daggers and we engrave 20% critical chance on it. If you don't have this helmet then you can simply make the other variant of this build. I wanted to make sure that you can still make this build if you don't have this helmet. On the arms we have assassin damage, 100% critical damage while full health and melee resistance. Then we engrave the Northern Traveler's perk here with minus 15% cool down on Battlecry and Aris Madness, but in fact that engraving is bugged, it still gives you the normal 50% reduction on every kill, which means you still have to do only 2 kills to have the ability immediately refilled and you can use it again. That is so fundamentally game breaking because in this epic set then we can use all melee resistance, complete crit shards, a very high crit damage and that makes it even more game breaking in this epic build here. On the belt we have assassin damage, 100% critical damage while full health and 10% crit chance. And then we engrave another 5% crit chance and 25% critical damage. That's the engraving from the Nemean Lion set. Again if you don't have this engraving or the Oxesas Helm of Darkness, simply use the other variant. In the other variant you don't have to use this engraving or the Oxesas Helm. On the torso we have assassin damage, warrior damage, 50% crit damage and then we engrave another assassin damage on it. You can actually engrave another assassin damage on an item that has assassin damage on the first spot when it is not on the second or third and when you fully upgraded it to 20%. Then finally on the boots we have assassin damage, 20% crit chance while full health, 100% crit damage and another assassin damage engraved. 
That gives us a total stats of 228% warrior damage and 384% assassin damage. We have 60% damage swords, but when you would use it with daggers or with spears, you could even get 90% with daggers and spears because we have 30% daggers on the helmet and we have another 30% on the spear already. So with spears and daggers you could potentially get the most warrior damage out of this build, but of course it depends on your preferred playstyle. I for example I'm totally happy by using a sword here in this build. Then of course we have 600% critical damage and 95% critical chance together with the 100% melee resistance, a really high value. When I load the other variant now you will see that the warrior and assassin damage values are exactly the same, the only difference is the crit chance and the crit damage in this build. On the first weapon we use the copycat sword. The copycat sword is a unique item that can only be acquired from the Lost Tales of Greece in Locris, a really bad day questline. It is only one of two melee weapons that have 10% crit chance on it. So by using this item you can avoid having to use the Nemean line set engraving. Sadly the copycat sword is not a perfect sword, it does not have 30% damage to swords, but that will be compensated by using a different helmet here in this build. On the sword we also engrave the 100% damage increase but health cap to 25%, similar to the other version. On the Spartan Javelin and the Bicon Bow there will be no change in engravings, we still use the same engravings as in the original version. The helmet is of course totally different because we don't want to use the Oxesas helmet. It has warrior damage, 50% critical damage, then damage with swords and we engrave another 20% crit chance while full health. Of course these engravings can also be in a different order when you find a different helmet that has 20% crit chance on it but not the 50% crit damage, then simply engrave the crit damage and you have the exactly same helmet. The bracers are exactly the same with assassin damage, 100% critical damage while full health, 30% melee resistance and then we also have the engraving from the nurse on traveler set with 15% cooldown reduction which is in fact 50% in reality. The belt has assassin damage, critical chance, 30% melee resistance and then another 100% critical damage while full health. Then the other two items, the torso and the boots are unchanged with the same engravings as before. So in the second variant we have total stats of again 228% warrior damage and 384% assassin damage, the same as before. Then we have 60% damage as swords, we have 100% critical chance and 575% critical damage. And also 100% melee resistance at the same time. So that is a slightly lower critical damage which can be difficult for some mercenaries if they have resistance against assassinations. So I would rather use the first variant if you have all the items but what you can also do is you can simply exchange one of these engravings here. For example on the torso you have assassin damage everywhere you can simply replace assassin damage with warrior damage or warrior damage with assassin damage. Then you can balance out your assassin damage and your warrior damage level. Level. When you need more assassin damage, simply use more items of assassin damage primary or the other way around. Then you can balance it out if you have trouble overrunning mercenaries in this build. In terms of ability points you will need around 184 ability points to make this build, at least in the basic version. You should start off with 6 cents and put 2 points here on Arrow Master that unlocks your elemental arrows, either fire or poison, whatever you want to use. Then I would recommend you to go for multi shot, then devastating shot and if you want to you can also adopt predator shot. A must have ability however is archery master that refills your first adrenaline segment. Then go for one point here on the overpower bow strike, that is bugged so I wouldn't use it, but that unlocks the ghost arrows. If you don't need the ghost arrows however then you can save all these four points. For the warrior tree you should go for the charged heavy attack that exactly triples your heavy damage. So when you make 2 million with the heavy attack then you make over 6 million with the charged heavy attack. So in fact it is 300% damage not 150%. Then pick up all the passive bonuses here with weapons master, more warrior damage, more crit chance, gear master, more armor. And then you can choose here to put either 1 point on flaming sack or 3 points. When you have the permanent fire on your weapon then you only need 1 point. When you want to activate it manually then you need 3 points here. That unlocks the fire mastery which gives you additional 40% fire damage which is really nice that simply boosts your damage output. The overpower attacks will be the strongest attack in your build with 24 million but also unlock Aura's Madness that is a really great ability that deals up to 10 million damage for the activation damage and can easily blast off all your enemies around you. If you have Fury then also go for Fury of the Bloodline that will refill 4 adrenaline bars, Ring of Chaos together with Fire, an incredible ability, I would really recommend you to use it if you haven't done it anyway. And then of course a second win to refill your health if you are ever in trouble. 
but of course we'll also refill our health when we deal damage that is also possible then go for shadow assassin and rush assassination a hero strike as usual and stealth master that increases our out of combat damage overnight for the masteries in the basic variant I only invested 12 points here on crit chance to get 4% another 12 points on crit damage. That will in total give us 93% critical chance but of course you can increase it if you have more than that. You can also go for warrior damage, I skipped that because I wanted to make it with as least points as possible but of course invest in warrior damage if you have the points. Very important is then 10 points here on melee resistance to get the 100% melee resistance. Invest a couple of points here on armor penetration if you want to. All other points are then invested in the assassin tab because we really want to overrun mercenaries even on nightmares so we'd rather go for assassin damage instead of warrior damage. Of course if we want to increase our warrior damage then the best multiplier is damage sword so I put definitely points here on damage sword rather than warrior damage. Of course if you have more points here than 180 then also go for warrior damage and max out warrior damage but for the priority I picked damage swords over warrior damage here and I picked assassin damage over warrior damage because I want to make sure you can still overrun mercenaries even in the low point variant. Then of course invest as much as possible into crit chance and critical damage while full health and also go for the points here on damage while full health because that is also amplifying our assassin damage as well. Of course if you have more points than 180 or 200 points then you don't have to worry about any priorities then simply max out all the crit chance crit damage then go for headshot damage and here 12 points each on the other hunter abilities. You can also invest 12 points on adrenaline or headshot kill. What I would really recommend you nowadays is to go for the chance to not consume special arrows if you have many points. Then you simply increase the size of your quiver which is really handy. Here in the warrior tab of course max out warrior damage if you have the points. Still 10 points on melee resistance will be absolutely enough. Max out fire damage, armor penetration, then go for damage dealt restored as health. And I know that is a very little bonus but 4% here on all warrior abilities is better than nothing if you still have some spare points. The bad thing with all these ability points increases here is when you have an ability that deals 400% and you add 4% on that, in fact you only get a 1% increase because it will be amplified from 400 to 404 and that is a 1% increase in reality. So use these ability enhancers as a last resort if you still have points to increase your damage. In the assassin tab we go for 20 points on damage whenever time is slowed down. That also kicks in when we use 6 cents and attempt to overrun mercenaries. So that gives us 10% additional damage when we overrun mercenaries. Of course we max out our assassin damage, our damage swords. Then we also go for 10% crit chance while full health. We go for the maximum crit damage while full health and also max out damage while full health. Then we go for a couple of points here on the adrenaline stuff. We will spread out 12 points on each of the adrenaline abilities because they stack and then they will give us more adrenaline in total. Then last but not least damage on leads and bosses, a bit of cooldown time reduction and also a slight bit of increase for all our assassin abilities because that is the only mastery that will also increase our RS madness damage. So I hope you like this epic Northern Travelers build as much as I do. Please don't forget to subscribe, leave me a like and see you next time.